Hello, F Sharp. How are you doing? I am super excited today. I get to talk about what must be one of my absolute favorite collections. It is called Row. Well, I call it Row. And that's just because that's the best name I could come up with at the time. If someone has a better one, feel free to suggest it. What it is, though, is a it is a wrapper for an array that enforces the correct units of measure on the index. Why might that be interesting? In a lot of high performance code, for the sake of going fast, you're t you're often just working with raw arrays and you need to index into these arrays at random. The problem is, is that when you index into them, you're just using an integer to do it. And so there's no kind of compiler guarantees that you're using the correct integer to get the value out of the array. And it's often that you will be dealing with multiple arrays, which correspond to different types of entities. And so you now have multiple ints that you're using to index into these arrays, but it's very easy to use the incorrect integer for indexing because the compiler can't help you. And so I will deal with situations where I have, okay, I have an array of nodes and I have an array of edges and I have an array of machines and I, need, I want to index into it. And so I have three different integers for indexing into them, but it'd be very easy for me to swap them around. So what I end up having to do is using like a very descriptive name. So hopefully I can see it, but I have dyslexia. So <laughs> using descriptive names isn't always super helpful. <laughs> so I really want the compiler to help me. And so what I do is I use this row collection and I put units of measure on that integer. So now the compiler is saying, hey, you're indexing into this thing, but this array is meant to have an index of type node and you're not using the correct thing. So I'm gonna throw a compiler error for you. I find it extremely helpful. It has essentially the same performance as array, if not better, depending on which of the array function, the array module functions you are using. And that's entirely due to more aggressive inlining. So this, what we're seeing here is actually the implementation of row. And what it does, what it is, is that first thing it does is it takes the unit of measure that you want to use for the index. And it has the values that it's now wrapping or containing. And so you give it a, an array of T, but you also have to tell it like, hey, I'm using this unit of measure. And there's a few different constructors that you can use here uh, for simplicity. The key thing here is these few lines where you wanted to actually get items out of it. And what this does is it's saying, hey, if you want a value out of this row, you need to give me an integer and it has to have a matching unit of measure. And then what it does is it inlines the lookup into the array itself. And same thing with setting values as well. So it's just enforcing the correct unit of measure. Now, let's look at actually using it real quick. Like, what, is, what does it look like? And I always use chicken as kind of my default silly unit of measure type thing because I don't want to think about it. So a lot of my examples feature chickens heavily. So this is just an F sharp script. And here I'm loading up row and I'm defining accounts. And this is me creating a row right here. I'm going to go ahead and run this. And let me zoom out so we can see more of this side by side. So I've just created a row of that has a chicken ID is the unit of measure for it. And right now it is containing integers. So if I want to get a value out of it, I have to use an integer with the chicken ID unit of measure. Uh, another example here, and let me just go ahead and return this so you can see it all in one line. Uh, another way you can create them is saying, hey, I want you to create a row. It's going to be 10. It's going to have 10 elements. And here I'm, this is it telling it, this is the unit of measure I'm going to use and what the default value is in this case of one. And like I said, if I want to index into it, so sizes is a row here where the unit of measure is chicken ID and the value is integer. And I'm trying to get a value out of it. So this would be, I'm indexing into the array and I just want the their very first element at index zero. 
And the compiler is saying, no, this doesn't make sense. It's because I'm expecting an int with the chicken ID unit of measure, and here you're just giving me an int. And so if I actually do want to be able to index directly into it, I need to annotate that with the unit of measure. Now, that might seem annoying, and it kind of kind of really can be. So I'm going to go ahead and move this to the bottom so we can see more of the code here. So if you're trying to write loops like this, like a four I in, and because of units of measure and F sharp, you kind of, you have to give what the increment is in here. So this is a really clunky way to write this and I would recommend it, but I mean, it is, it is technically possible, but you have to do all this annotation stuff. Most of the time what you would use though is the functions in the row module and I've implemented all the ones that I have found useful. And so they can be found in there. So like, hey, row.iter is going to uh, just iterate through all the elements in that row. And it, here it's just printing something out. So nothing special there. Go ahead and run down. See, printing out the same thing. I also have, there's also iter i. So the first argument in this case is going to be the, the index and it's going to have the unit of measure on it. So you're, you're able to iterate through, and in this case, it's going to print out, hey, this is what the index is, and this is what the size is. And th now you can actually use that index, and if you had two different arrays, sorry, two different rows using the same index, you could use that as a way of indexing into the other one and uh, doing whatever analysis that you need. There's also just all the obvious uh, ones of like row.map. It gives you a new row, but it's transformed the values and it's still indexed with a chicken ID as the unit of measure. Uh, um, I'm doing another map where I'm creating names here. And so now what I can do is I have two different rows. One is the names and one is the sizes. And I can do a row dot map two and again map two is making sure that these two rows are actually indexed by the same unit of measure if the units of measure didn't match it would throw an error saying like hey i cannot do i cannot map through i cannot do a map two on two different rows that have two different units of measure and again so this is just a way of providing correctness while also giving you the speed of an array now this becomes incredibly useful when you start modeling your domain like this. And so this is an example of a struct of arrays. Now, I know it's not actually a struct, but that's just kind of the naming that is often used in industry. So if you go like look this up in other languages, it's the idea of struct of arrays versus array of structs. And the idea is instead of me having like a type chicken, which in this case, if I was going to do the equivalent would be da, 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 size of float name string and age and instead of doing and then having like let chickens equal into some kind of, you know, chicken array. So it's an array and in that array are these complex entities. Instead of doing that, model it this way where you have a, a struct record in this case in F-sharp. The idea of like, I have all the different fields of it, but each of those fields is actually stored in an array. The reason that's nice is because it starts enabling things that would not be possible otherwise. Specifically, I'm thinking about uh, SIMD instructions and other types of parallelization that really want arrays, like raw arrays to be able to iterate through. And when you're modeling your domain using records like this, that is very antagonistic to the way the CPU wants to work. So instead of that, and for speed, you can model it this way. I am not an expert on this. I'm working on it. That's what this whole channel is about. <laughs> but I'm saying that's part of why I really like Row because again, 
I'm getting the performance benefit of working with a raw array and just being able to index directly into an array. It's very fast. But here I'm getting guarantees that the indexing that I'm doing actually makes sense. So for me, this eliminates a huge number of, of possible bugs. Because again, a lot of the algorithms that I'm writing is very much like arrays and just indexing into arrays for the sake of speed. So I know I've been saying like, hey, it's like as fast as arrays. But, you know, you shouldn't just trust me, you should verify. So what I did is I set up some benchmarks. And what I did is I wanted to look at cases where I had one element, 10, 100, 1,000, and 10,000. And here in the benchmarks, what I do is I create a set of arrays. And I have an array with one element, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. And then I take the exact same arrays and then I wrap them in rows. And I set up some tests. So I'm like, okay. I want you to do array sum and row sum, array iter i, row iter i, array min, row min. And just like, again, just like all these functions that you will find in the array module, I wrote the equivalent ones in row. And a lot of the time what I did is I actually went and looked at the F sharp source code and pretty much like copy and pasted that and did the necessary transforms to get it to work with units of measure nice. So a lot of this is ripped from that. Uh, in some places I put some additional inlining in order to speed it up. And the results that I get were very promising. So here you see array sum and row sum. The row is slightly faster. Array iter and row iter. You see that row iter i is significantly faster. And again, this is because of some more aggressive inlining that I'm taking advantage of. Array min, row min, essentially the same. Min by, row min by, essentially the same. Uh, again, the iters rows a little bit faster. And the one place where I have not been able to get row to be as fast as array is in the case of map here at a single element, row is much slower. But if we go to a case where we have a thousand elements and we look at row map and array map, the performance is the same. So I'm still looking into why that is, but in almost every other case, row is just as fast, if not faster, and especially here in, in the case of like IDER2, IDER I2, uh, row is significantly faster than the array version. Again, this is all due to just additional, more aggressive inlining wherever I can take advantage of it. And the 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 IDERs, the IDER I's are again like the workhorses of what I do. So for me, like that's really important. So the reason I wanted to show you this and kind of show you some of this initial concept is because there's a lot of code that I'm going to be showing in the coming weeks that really heavily take advantage of the row collection type. So I needed to give, I need to lay some foundation for you so you can have an idea of uh, what I'm talking about. And I do not have this as a NuGet package right now. And the reason is because I don't want to support it. <laughs> um, but if someone was excited about it and if someone said like, hey, Matthew, I would help you with supporting it and stuff, like I, I would do it at that point. But right now, just because of the amount of stuff that I do, like feel free to, to go and like copy and paste this code. I mean, that's what I'm doing right now because it's not that much. And it's not, it's just, just a few hundred lines of code here where I'm implementing uh, that creates the sums, the sum buys again, nothing terribly complex, but again, um, don't want to support it <laughs> unless I have someone to help me. I also have inside of here, if I go down, 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 I also have a read only row version of this, where again, it takes the array, but in this case, it's only exposing the ability to get items out of it. And this is because often what I will do is sometimes I'll have what is read only data in my simulation and I need to go just like look up values. And uh, I, w I want the same speed. I want to enforce the units of measure on the index, but I don't want to be able to mutate it. And I don't want anything else to be able to mutate it. So that's why I create uh, the read only row uh, version as well. So. Hopefully you find this interesting. Like I said, this is going to be featured quite a bit in coming code. Uh, I, I really like it. I think it's really cool. I think units of measure is just one of these incredible features in F sharp that is undersung and yeah, I think it's fantastic. So I'm looking forward to showing you some more exciting stuff in the coming weeks with how I actually use this to create some really fast code. So until then, 
Uh, you all have a great evening. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.